Hi, I'm Jeremy Shepard, founder and president of PearlParadise.com. We're going to be taking a journey of the pearl producing areas of southeast China. We'll be visiting one farm to witness the nucleation of oysters and another to watch the actual harvesting of pearls. From there, we're going to be visiting a factory where we'll watch some of the treatments that are done to the pearls before they're actually delivered to the market. It's the middle of winter here in Xuwen, and winter is always the best time to harvest pearls, and that's because during winter when the water is the coldest, the nacre deposits more slowly around the nucleus. This enhances the luster of the pearl. So when the pearls are harvested during a cold time of year, the luster is always going to be better. Although the winter is the best time to harvest the pearls, it's not always the best time to buy the pearls. To buy pearls, natural light is extremely important. It's difficult to see the depth of the nacre, to see the actual luster and color of the pearls without natural sunlight. As you can see today, the sun is not shining. We have a pretty heavy cloud cover here. So we may have to wait until tomorrow before we can actually examine the pearls for purchase. They have a term for Westerners here called Yang Guizu. It's like the white ghost. A lot of people here have never seen a Westerner before in their lives. I've been told by many people here that they've only seen people that look like me on TV, as a matter of fact. It takes about 36 hours to get to this place from the USA, and not a lot of Westerners ever make that trip. This is a very poor rural part of China where the average wage is less than $4 a day. Very few people actually have cars here. Most rely on bicycles, motorcycles, and oxen. We're heading out to the coastal pearling areas of Shiling. It's about a two hour drive from Shu Wen. This morning there's a farm that's harvesting their pearls and another one scheduled to nucleate their oysters. If we time it right, we may be able to catch both. I'm standing in front of one of the largest pearl producing areas in China. As far as the eye can see around me, there are stakes planted into the water. Attached to each of those stakes is a basket filled with oysters. And inside each of those oysters is a pearl growing right now. What's happening today is the nucleation of the oysters. What they do is they open the oysters up approximately a half an inch. They prop it open with this little stick, and then these young surgeons go to work. A piece of mantle tissue is taken from a donor muscle. The mantle tissue is then sliced into small squares about a millimeter in diameter. That mantle tissue is placed against the nucleus inside the oyster when it's being nucleated. First, an incision is made on the gonad, or reproductive organ, of the oyster. Then, the nucleus is carefully inserted through this incision, which is followed by a small piece of mantle tissue. Inserting the mantle tissue is a very important part of the nucleation process. Without the mantle tissue, a pearl will never develop. This tissue contains epithelial cells. The epithelial cells grow into a pearl sac which envelops the nucleus, deposits nacre, and actually creates the pearl. The nucleation process we've just witnessed is actually invasive surgery for these oysters. 
After the oysters are nucleated, they are then placed into these specialized nets to keep the oysters separate and safe, and then they're lowered into cement tubs of salt water for a minimum of one month to recuperate. Depending on the size of the farm, it can take anywhere from a week to about a month to harvest all the oysters. This is the middle of winter and the water is at its coldest temperature, which is the best time to harvest the oysters because the nacre deposited on the pearl is at its highest luster at this time of the year. This is probably the quickest part of the process and this is the day they've been waiting for for about a year and a half. Each boat when it's on its way back has about 15,000 oysters in it. Each one of these individual farms, the smaller ones may carry up to about 500,000 oysters to the larger one closer to 2 million. So you can see why it could take up to a month to harvest all the oysters. This is harvest day at this farm here in Chile. The first step is to bring the oysters in from the sea. These men start by cutting the oysters in half. They're taking the top shell off, leaving a meaty portion in the bottom shell, which is then taken over to the ladies here who are pulling the pearls out of the oysters one by one. Now only about 80% of the oysters will actually have a pearl inside. The other oysters have already discarded the nucleus. The last step is cutting the meat out of the oysters. When the meat is cut out of the oysters as everything is used. The oyster meat is used for food and the shells are used for fertilizer.